kind of as you were doing backing um, up to more macro views. So we, we've been talking about you and and how in your own life you've discovered where the light shines through the woundedness. But yeah, talking about we we live in a, a culture uh, both American here in the Western world and also throughout the globe where I feel like our wounds are fairly exposed and maybe because of our I don't know, a lack of desire to be authentic or maybe not knowing how to share our story or maybe not being encouraged to share our story or being afraid because of all the, the barriers from our eyes, you know, whether that's um, a different color of skin, whether that's different religions, whether that, whatever that is that seems to naturally cause us to divide. How are you as a musician, as an artist, but also as a husband and a father and a friend, what do you feel like your role is in a world of woundedness? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I think um, a personal hero of mine once told me that God doesn't need a lawyer. My job is to be honest. And I think um, that entails honesty w with not only in, in songwriting and all that, but also I think it, going back to the confession element, I don't think we know how to fail. I don't think it's been modeled for us. And failure is the most universal experience mm -hmm. that any human can have. How many people will actually win a gold medal at the Olympics? And how many people will fail mm -hmm. trying? Um, so I, I'm, I'm convinced that part of what my hope, I mean, to go back to uh, my family, my daughter, um, I, I want to be, and this is again, a, a desire, not a, uh, something I've figured out, but I, I want to be someone who's, who's quick to say when I screwed up, you know, like to be able to admit wrongdoing. I think that's important. And I think that that's something that, you know, especially within the church, if we can't confess that we're sinners, the truth is not in us. I mean, it's mm -hmm. scriptural. Um, anyone who says that, He's got it all figured out. Is telling a lie. <laughs> it's pretty black and white. So I mean, to be able to say no, I I right. don't have it figured out. Mm -hmm. I am a sinner, and I am in need of grace. Um, I feel like to be able to do that, and and to build a culture that is built on our 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 need for grace, and to build to build that in where we're all excited to give mm -hmm. that, excited to participate in that world. You know, I, I think that that would be my role um, as a musician, as a husband, as a father, to, to forgive and be forgiven. Uh, what a motivating component or um, element of our humanity, to be hu humble. I, when you were talking about as a father and, and to admit failures, you know, the, the most loving thing my, I feel like my father ever did was to come back and say, I'm sorry about a, a wrong, you know, even though here's a 40-year-old man and, a, and an 8-year-old, yeah. yeah. right? How much that speaks to us of love, um, this common denominator. Uh, there's a lyric, this is making me think of this, um, from the new record, Ain't we all just Abraham's sons, just sinners with a song and drums? We all fall on our knees and bleed the same. So we're talking about this evening, right? This all people in need of redemption, this common denominator. I don't feel like we really do that or that we get that or um, what I often think of from a, from a church perspective, especially in the Western world church, an American church. We hang these banners over our church that seem to um, put up a barrier of who's allowed in, of, of who's allowed to experience the spiritual experience of seeking God, yet, what I see from them, what's motivated, must be their hearts because it doesn't matter if their neighbor is a Mormon, a gay. It doesn't matter whatever they, they seem to have a criticism about, but yet those kids are there as kids. And those illnesses, when someone is hurting or sick or whatever, they, they take care of them. So what I feel like in, in, and I'm speaking specifically about church culture, and especially maybe here in the States, is that not our banners aren't necessarily reflecting our hearts and what this lyric is saying to me is more of what their hearts is reflecting that we're all the same right yeah i mean um when you start to talk about faith and theology i think the people that are yelling the loudest are usually the most scared i mean that 
if I told you this couch was green, or that it was a couch, it's not a chair, um, <laughs> you, you probably wouldn't uh, get upset with me. You wouldn't start yelling and shaking your fist. Um, you would probably graciously say, I, I think it, you might be colorblind first, and, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a chair, not a couch, you know? And it, it wouldn't be a touchy subject. Mm -hmm. But I think the reason why faith and these issues of, you know, uh, theology, are, it's very touchy because it's, it's, you're talking about something very serious and um, have eternal consequences and there's there's fear involved, you know, and some of that's natural. Um, maybe a holy reverence, you a desire to get it right, but then some of it I think is um, not necessarily. I mean, perfect love casts out all fear. So at some point, you know, that dare we hope that all men might be saved. Dare we hope? Dare we hope in a big God who would who would actually love people that aren't like me. Dare we hope that he might even forgive someone who doesn't look and act like me? I don't know. Maybe. Maybe God's that big. <laughs> and maybe there's a dialogue there. But I think, the, the, for me, the dialogue begins by saying, wow, I'm most surprised that I'm let into the party. You know what I mean? Like, that, that's where it starts for me. Maybe God's big enough. Maybe God's big enough to forgive someone that doesn't look like me, love someone that doesn't look like me. We're talking about mystery, right? We're talking about um, being open. And this is something I feel like you as a musician, you as a songwriter, you guys as a band have always perpetuated elements of mystery that we don't have all these answers, you know, worked out. And that this is a dialogue. We're not dictating a, an answer. We're actually opening up a conversation. What is mystery? How does mystery play into the creation of your music, into how you interact with the listeners? Uh, anything you guys do as a band, and of course that comes from you as a person. Yeah, so like the, the big questions we're asking in our songs, they're not some sort of like, um, it's, it's, not, it's not play acting. You know, these are actual questions that I'm thinking about at three o'clock in the morning on a rock next to the Pacific Ocean, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't believe in a God that I can fit in my back pocket on a piece of paper and say, quad eris demonstrata, here he is, <laughs> would you like to see my God? Fold him back up and say, there, you're wrong, I proved it. I don't believe in a God that's that. I believe in a God that says, who are you? Tell him I am that I am. I think that whenever I feel like I have God figured out, I, f I feel like he, he reminds me that I don't. And so that there, <laughs> when I think of the mystery, I, you go back to the humility of saying, no, I don't know. And I, I have something to learn from everyone. And I do believe that there's, there's doctrine. I believe that there's truth. I believe all of these things. But um, I don't believe that truth is something that I possess mm -hmm. to like pull out and brag about and show other people how they're wrong. I think truth is rather something that possesses me. Mm -hmm. And that should be the way and bigger than truth, love. I've been so deeply loved that that should transcend my actions. So music, let's take this back to music. Okay. Um, how music, I think of music as therapeutic. It kind of goes back to the, the beginning of our conversation. Music is this language. It gives us, I, f I feel like it gives us kind of a penmanship uh, to our feelings and to our thoughts, to our questions, to our doubts, to the mystery. Uh, how do you feel like music is that for you? How does it allow you to work out these layers of life, um, spirit life, you know, family life, music life, and then, and then how does that then connect you back again to, um, you, to each other and to God, but maybe even more outward focused to, to listeners, to people? Yeah. So the, you know, music for me, um, from the very beginning has always been that ability to talk about things I, I have no way to talk about otherwise, you know, mm -hmm. um, I think you could sum it up with God, girls, politics, and death, you know, like, and maybe a few other topics, but like <laughs> things that I, I don't know how to talk about with my closest friends, let alone stra thousands of strangers 
a night, you know, and, and music a lot transcends that and allows me to scream things that shouldn't be whispered, mm. you know. So on this new record, talking about where the light shines through, I feel like certainly the last nine albums helped prepare us as a band for this. These are stories and songs that we couldn't have written the be at the beginning of this journey. And even more than that, I think the, the last solo project that I did, um, 25 songs for 24 hours, where you're kind of chasing light around the clock and using it as a metaphor for, for faith and doubt, and death, life, birth, mm -hmm. all these things, polar opposites and the extremities which we're kind of pulled between as humans. I think that that journey helped prepare this this album of polarities where the light shines through is is an album that feels like it again couldn't have been written without that um but yeah it's this expression that for me is is allows me to go places that that i couldn't go i always think of uh, as music songwriting is like archaeology <laughs> where you every day you get up and you dig you get a guitar and you start digging and Sometimes you discover like a McDonald's wrapper and just it's just trash and you're like, okay, well, that's what I got today. <laughs> and other times you discover this lost city that's it's been there and it's under your feet all along and you can't really claim credit for it. It just happened. You know, like a good song doesn't have my fingerprints on it. It's, mm -hmm. It feels like it transcends the moment and it just came and you take your shoes off and say, all right, well, there it is, you know? So, yeah. It's more of an uncovering. Yeah, right? absolutely. And a building. Last question for this conversation. If you stripped it all back, what is the core motivator do you feel like, and we'll just go to you, so this may speak for the band, but it may just speak for you. What is a core motivator for you to create music, to do what you do? I feel like there's this great homesickness I, f I feel like there's uh this longing and um you know with with music you can art articulate these things and and um for me it's about that conversation that begins when those honest utterances are brought to life and and so for me, whether I'm playing in a parking lot for 30 people after the show or on stage, you know, smoke and lights and whatever else is there, the goal is conversation. And I feel like music can be that vehicle towards hope, you know, and as a band, that's what that's what we do. You know, hope deserves an anthem and that's why we sing. <laughs>